Ethan Ralph, what's up, dude? How's it going, Dalton? What's up, brother? We're just hanging out. How are you? Pretty good, man. Getting ready for the big show tomorrow. Kind of slotting in some of the uh, some of the schedule there. I know you're going to be on too. So yeah, the big show kind of has a few bookkeeping requirements to it. So I've been going through, and let's see how many I got on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine, ten, and I'm still not even halfway done. So uh, I'm thinking uh, we're going to have a big show tomorrow. Oh, dude, I'm so pumped. I'm excited. I really am. This is going to be this is going to be a blast. It's just going to be a fun time, dude. It's just going to be a fun time, and it's one that uh, I think a lot of people have been wanting to see, uh, and it's gotten pretty heated yeah. uh, this week, I would say. Yeah, uh, I would say. I was uh, Hey, I was tuned in. I was tuned in to your show. Uh, do you want to, I mean, like, tell the people what you found. Tell the people what you found. I think you know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, what I found in which way? In the Medicare situation, in Medicare's little world. Oh, give me with the stuff from earlier. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He immediately started spurging out about it uh, on Twitter with, uh, mm -hmm. of course, I came up through Gamergate, as did he. So I, you know, I'm a little bit younger than him, though. Uh, although I'm not young, I wouldn't say, but I'm younger than him. Uh, and uh, anyway, he, one of the famous events during, infamous, I guess you'd say, during, during Gamergate was him finger fucking. <sighs> his girlfriend who was another e celebrity named jade and uh basically they had got together he flew her to his house she was about 19 or whatever far be it from me to uh talk about uh, younger girlfriends or whatever but i'm just saying uh <laughs> far be it from him as well i guess is what i'm saying yeah yeah uh, yeah, yeah, yeah he flew her out there and uh, during one of these drunk streams that they used to do um he finger fucked her on air <sighs> Um, now, allegedly, it was just finger fucking. I don't know. Now, I, I want to say, too, okay, because yeah. it is like, you know, like, it's just fucked up. It's fucking weird, right? It's fucking gross yeah. that that happened, right? Like, despite. It's fucked, and of course, they took umbrage. I saw so many comments, and that's, you know, one reason why I went in on it, of course. But, uh, I mean, she does sound like she didn't really want what was going on. Uh, in that clip. Now, of course, they're married now, and it is what it is, right? Like, yeah. I, won't, uh, I won't be alerting the FBI or what have you, but, uh, <laughs> you know, that was uh, that was pretty blatant right there on air, and, you know, they've been throwing around a lot of uh, fake accusations about me, and, man, I got, God, I really wish, I just heard something about, um, about the person saying those things too, and I can't share it right now. But very soon, uh, very soon, I'll say that uh, that they're going to be looking even worse than they already look. These are people who knew me for years, dude, who were on my shows. Yeah, uh, you know, they had no problem trying to smear me as a rapist on some bullshit. They True. had no problem working with people trying to put me in jail. Um, and again, you know, people like that, they show you where they show you where their colors are, right? Like, I mean, you don't have to. You can sit there and make excuses, or or they they can say they're just like that's just jokes, bro. It's just jokes. Why are you getting upset? Well, okay, um, you know it's just jokes when I talk shit too, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, unironically, that's the thing. That's what I was thinking the whole time. I was like, you know, they they did the same thing and and they played it off as as just joking around, a little internet tomfoolery and. You well, who just, even talks like that, honestly? Like, who, like, I mean, just think about it. Oh, why are you getting upset? We're just, we're just accusing you of rape. I mean, it's no big deal, right? Yeah. We got, we got our whole fucking crew uh, of Spurgs trying to call you a rapist every day. Why are you getting upset? Um, well, I mean, first off, I'm not a rapist. So that's one reason. Uh, and it's just false bullshit, right? Like, I, I, I don't know. It, it, it has always been baffling to me uh like the ethos of a certain you know certain crowd where you just like have to sit back yeah uh, take everything no i don't i don't and uh that's just not how i live my life so well that's kind of how they viewed the internet i think for so long because these people acted as though they were untouchable they acted as though you know their shit doesn't stink and you know there's no there's no shit on their shoes etc and now it's like hey wait right. a minute Maybe you guys aren't as uh, holy and as uh, moral and, and, you know, fantastic as, as you guys claim. That's exactly right. And also, they're used to people bowing down to them. Uh, this whole clique where they talk like the Internet is a person or a sentient being. It's not. 
It's not. There's a bunch of people online. There is no internet. You know what I mean? Like as a, they talk about the internet like it's the market or something. You know, you know what I mean? Which is also retarded, by the way. Um, <laughs> right? Uh, and so it's like, no. You know what? Fuck your gay ass rules. You didn't have any rules when you're doing what you're doing to me and others, by the way. It's not just me. Yeah, true. And Bake talked about it. Guess what? I was in on some of that shit uh, that they were doing to Baked. And he talked about that, too. Uh, and at the time, it was kind of just like, well, Medicare says this guy's bad. He says he's attacking his audience. You know, the mob's going after him. Let's go after him. I mean, that's kind of their mentality. Uh, and I know it well because, uh, you know, <laughs> I came from that that area, right, uh, where they're just like, here's the target. It doesn't have to even be any legitimate reason, really, uh, yeah. to go after you're Like, Baked. Uh, we talked about this several times already, but it's like he didn't really do anything. Right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, he, he, just, he just tells people to stop fucking around in chat. Uh, he had, a, you know, arguably a couple cringy moments or whatever on stream, but it certainly wasn't, um, you know, this guy needs to be taken out. Like, I, I don't know. It's, the guy's it's, a content uh, creator. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, we're all just doing, you know, we're all just making content and we're all just kind of doing our thing. Um and, I mean, like, you know this, I think, more than anyone. Uh, like, there, there is, like, a level of fun to, like, some of the conflict, right? To, to the blood sports, to some of the drama. Wouldn't you say? Couldn't you agree with that? That there's fun to it? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, I think this whole week has been uh, exhilarating. <laughs> That's just a blast. Uh, also, it, it really has. And also, you know, I've gotten a big kick out of... Um, you know, they're just, they're losing their minds, um, that, uh, that Nick basically just told him to fuck off. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, we're just doing our thing over here and their little bullshit crusade doesn't really have much of an effect of, uh, on us at all over here at cozy. Um, and I think that does kind of enrage them a little bit where it's just like, Okay, actually, you've inflated the numbers in my show, the numbers in my bank account, and the whole internet's talking about me. So, I mean, if that was your goal, <laughs> like, if that was your goal, then mission accomplished. Uh, yeah. So I just look forward to seeing. I mean, your streams, your your show's been popping off, dude. This week, well, that Monday show. Well, let's just say this from Friday to Monday, uh, but it really topped off. Um, you know, we did the weekend appearances over the weekend on politically yep. provoked. That was wild. Um, another appearance on Stardust's panel, which was kind of on Nick's show too. And then Monday's show on Tequila Sunrise, that really was just I didn't see it breaking out like this really. I kind of thought, you know, maybe there'd be a little back and forth. Cause Nick did criticize Medicare on Sunday um pretty explicitly and <laughs> yeah. so, like yeah. right like it was yeah. it was pretty explicit like it wasn't uh as as harsh as he was later in the week and on monday but it was but basically you could tell it's kind of building huh you could kind of tell if it was in the air it was something was building it's, it's, you could tell it was something he had thought about before yeah uh, as well right like it wasn't uh it didn't just come up because of ralph uh which i, I see you know a lot of people try to say or whatever nah it seemed like i mean it bubbled up maybe because of me, but it, it seemed like it was something that Nick had been thinking about for quite some time. Well, there's, uh, I think I, honestly, or I just want to say this yeah. medical taking shots towards Nick, um, you know, several shots here that now I wouldn't say anything major, but you know, cat boy, this course, joking around yeah. about federal informants and baked and all that shit. So he's already dabbled in that area and I've seen it and I'm, I know Nick is like me and he's seen it as well. So, well, you know, the thing is you look around and, uh, a lot of these people, I mean, that's what they, they really are just jealous. You know, they're, they're jealous of what, of Nick's success and, and what he's built and, and the incredible loyal audience that he's had, that he has, um, and I, I think what they look, you know, they're looking at it like I'm washed up. I have, uh, you know, I have nothing going on really. You know, there's, there's just not a lot to me anymore. Uh, and I think they really just, they, they definitely, I don't think they ever saw themselves being a part of America first because their content doesn't really fit with what America first is or, or what, you know, goes on. Um, and they decided to pick their side and, uh, quite frankly, you know, it's, it was wasteful and it's stupid because now, like Nick said the other night, he's going to resurrect Medicare's career and then he's going to destroy it. He's going to put him down like a sick dog. 
and I'm ready for it. And again, you kind of hit on to something there too. Um, that you see a brain dead fucking loser like Andy Worski. This dude can't talk about politics. He can barely <laughs> even talk about what color the sky is. You know what I mean? Like this guy's he's he's a few brain cells short let's just put it that way um and ppp you know he's a f fucking faggot so um anything he says i mean i guess he can talk about politics a little bit more intelligently than warski true but true. Whole rest, yeah, which i mean is not a very high bar let's be honest uh but you look at all these other motherfuckers and none of them really can uh and yeah i think a lot of them are just salty um, there's really no reason for Worski to be doing what he's doing towards Nick. Same for PVP, really. Um, these guys just decided they had a lane. They're trying to make shekels. There's really no reason for it. Um, PPP himself is one of the biggest liars that, that exists on the internet. He made up a bunch of stuff about me calling his church. We're going to have his partner on the show tomorrow, by the way, ex-partner, uh, surfer. So, oh, um, no shit. Yeah, we are going to have surfer on the Damn. show tomorrow. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to go into that as well. Uh, I think he's talked about this on his own show and admitted that they just made that up. Um, so this is like his whole origin story, right? That I fucking, you know, was persecuting him and all this bullshit. It never happened. It, many such cases, right? Like they just made up a bunch of stuff yeah. all around. Um, and that's kind of one of the things about Medicare. Um, it doesn't have to be true dude like they can just say whatever they want and um he was live tweeting one of my streams the other day and he's like ralph's on here sobbing and oh, like all this shit yeah. and you see tweet after tweet where people are just like oh my god i can't believe he's sobbing. Well, like they take it at face value right yeah 100 um, percent they do yeah and i'm sure he would say oh well i was just you know being hyperbolic first off he, he lies like that all the time second off it's like okay well you know a lot of people are just fucking buying that hook line and sinker leg like, and you know they're doing that right so um i don't yeah. know that's pretty much the whole um chemo casino style there just do a whole fan fiction show and a lot of these people the stories in their head you know what i mean like they have fan fiction on their own and they want to believe right like it's just oh yeah 100 percent uh, yeah, it's just wild to me. I don't know. The shit I read about myself on a daily basis uh, is insane. I bet it's crazy. I bet it's crazy. Uh, uh, yeah. I want to let the chat know we are doing a dono goal for the Joker return uh, for the Beards and Beardly 24-hour stream. We're going to reenact a uh, segment of the Dark Knight. If we hit this goal, I'll dress up as the Joker. He's going to be Batman. It's going to be a good time. Um, Ralph, what do you? how do you see this playing out, this debate? Because... Um, you know, I've heard a lot of different takes uh, for tomorrow and, and what people are kind of anticipating. Do you think that this is going to devolve quickly into just straight up blood sports? Do you think it's going to be maybe more cordial than people are expecting? Where do you see this going tomorrow? Um, actually, I'm thinking, I mean, you know, who knows once it gets started, maybe, True. maybe, uh, maybe it is a little more, um, cordial than i expect but i think it's gonna be most likely oh there i go see i forgot that that's there it. you go <laughs> i didn't switch to the right obs scene that oh you're problem. fine you're fine um i think it's gonna be fireworks right from the start actually is what i think um i think nick's probably gonna come right for his throat um i i don't see any any other real um possibility there do you um, think do you all right how all right have you have you placed any bets on this yet? No. No, I have not placed any bets. Do you want to? Well, what are we betting? <laughs> How long it takes Medicare to mention Catboy. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know it's going to happen. Under, what was an over-under? Yeah. Okay, so what's it at? What are we setting it at? I'll do... I'm going to say it's going to happen in the... No way, we had to set a time, like, okay. over under 20 minutes or under, over under 5 minutes, or, like, we have to set a... All right, over under, over under 20 minutes. Under. Damn, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm with you. I'm with you. All right, five minutes, five minutes. <laughs> Probably still under, to be honest with you. You think, you think that's going to come right out the gate? If it was 10, I would for sure take under. Five, 
Maybe. You know what? I'll, I'll go over. I'll go over. I'll go over. Over on five? We'll do we'll do a hundred dollar bet. Five. I'll go over five. You go. Now wait a minute. Hold on. Wait. A hundred dollar bet. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to think about it. Ask me again at the end of the show. For five minutes on ten, I'll probably do it. On five, I don't know. I'm not sure. I have to think about it. I have to think about it. <laughs> people, just people in chat saying 20 seconds. I mean, I'm about to write it down, dude. And I'm like, hey, dude, on. I mean, sign you up, it on bed. What the fuck, dude? Honestly, I mean, it very well could be like first thing he says. It's gonna be the first thing he says. Honestly, it really could be. Why the fuck didn't I fucking take it right away? <laughs> um, I don't know. I'll think about it by the end. We'll do some kind of bet by the end of the show. Um, I really do think it's probably going to be fiery right from the start, though, because okay, there's been so much shit talked, um, and you know some of it's just shit talk back and forth online, whatever. But um, I don't know, man. There's been a few things said uh, that doesn't seem like they're gonna, you know, be singing Kumbaya anytime soon. No, this is gonna be. Uh, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. It feels like there's some bad blood for real now. Uh, yeah, think, I'm, I'm loving it, dude. Uh, Jim lost his mind when I <laughs> when I mentioned uh, flagging his channel. He he started having a conniption, and uh, Nick said a bunch of things. Uh, Jim came out to uh, was it today or yesterday where he tried to say uh, Nick was a fed and all this stuff. I don't know. Everything Jim says is like so tired though. Okay, like, someone in chat makes a really good point. We should make the bet off screen. Off, off. Well, because look, he's gonna, he's gonna be, he's probably watching this. Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, you know what? That's a good point. We maybe we should make it off screen because he might. You know what, dude? Spiteful enough that he might fuck me over just to cost me a hundred dollars. Now that I think, that's about what it. I was just thinking. <laughs> let's actually let's make it on stream. Let's do it on stream. <laughs> uh, oh, dude. Yeah. Now, wh how long do you think it's gonna go? That's a good question too. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, all right, well, what, you, you, you're you asking how long is just Medicare and Nick? How long are they just going to go at it to, like, just one-on-one? -on -one? Well, so, again, and so what I was told is it's going to be Medicare and Nick one-on-one, -on -one, and then um, other people, either, you know, there'll be opportunities for other people to come in, basically. Um, after that, I mean, I'm thinking they got to go at least, what, 90 minutes? 60 minutes. What do you think? I mean, I'm, well, I'm yeah, well, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking an hour and a half. Um, yeah. And then, you know, it'll be, it'll probably be and end up being, you know, two, two and a half hour long, probably show. Uh, once it's all said and done with, I know that I think Michael said that he wanted to bring on uh, some other people. Um, are you on that? I think you're on there, right? You're you're on to be yeah, on. Yeah, I'm on the roster. I don't know if it's confirmed a thousand percent. I'm going to be on there, but um, yeah, I'm on the I'm on the roster. You and uh, Flamenco, right? You both. Yeah, I believe so. I was told me Flamenco and maybe Augie, but I think there might have been a couple additions since then. I don't really, I don't really know and couldn't really tell you because it's not my it's not my show. Yeah, true. Uh, at 9 p.m., but uh, it will be my show all the way until 9 p.m. Uh, and we're going to cover it live, too, on the kill stream. So, um, I mean, I guess we'll be watching. With, I don't know what the panel will be like. Uh, I see Alex Stein's going to be there at 7. Brittany uh, from Politically Provoked at 7.30. Beardson, uh, I haven't talked to you yet, but I got him planned for 7.45. Uh, baked for 8 p.m. and then some more. Uh, I'm still I'm still slotting it in, doing my homework here. Yeah. Uh, I, I actually admire that work ethic, dude. I don't know how you set this stuff up like that. It's insane. I try to do you you uh I was just dude, I was so happy you agreed to come on tonight. I was like, man, this is gonna cause I went to go see the Northman with Beardson and, and Tyler. Um so it was like right during where I normally do the show. Pokes up, sent three dollars, Ralph. Can you get into your relationship with Jesus a little more? Like what brought you to Christ? Mm -mm. What brought me to Christ? Well, I was actually um, and again, I could talk about it some. Yeah, sure. I was raised Southern Baptist, um, actually, um, and went to Catholic school, though. Um, so I went to Catholic school from uh, kindergarten through sixth grade, even though I was Southern Baptist because it was like 
just better. My grandparents wanted to send me there, so they paid for me to go to Catholic school there in town. So I'm very familiar with <laughs> uh, with Catholicism. Matter of fact, I've probably done more <laughs> Stations of the Cross than most of you motherfuckers uh, and all that stuff. Now, certain things I couldn't do, of course, communion and all yeah. that stuff. But they would still have the non-Catholics go through pretty much everything else. Uh, and I couldn't, um, I couldn't be an altar boy, but I could like read um some of the um liturgy or whatever uh in church and like bible verses and gotcha. chapters in the bible and stuff so i would do that as a kid actually that's what got me good at reading uh in public which is why i don't have any problems with that really on the show and stuff which is a skill um you know some people do have problems with it so um i kind of um kind of fell out of god and believing there for a while uh, actually was an atheist for a while um and kind of went from atheism to agnosticism basically the same argument that turned me into an atheist kind of turned me into an agnostic because uh i was like well if you can't if you can't say there is a god you can't really for sure say there isn't one either right? it's like oh, that doesn't really that doesn't really make sense to me logically so i kind of uh drifted over into that um then i just didn't really think about it that much at all or just kind of put it out of my mind like the whole idea of spirituality gotcha. or whatever um then my my dad passed away in 2019 um my mom passed away last year in 2021 which uh you know didn't really expect that to happen um and um kind of fucked with me a lot especially my i mean my dad dying fucked with me too but uh my mom passing away was really uh really hard to swallow still is um and kind of i would say uh, brought me back around into into belief and uh kind of get involved a little bit and you know i won't i'm not trying to grandstand or whatever but um kind of kind of brought me back around a little bit and i'm planning on getting back into church and since my fiance is catholic and um her whole family's catholic i you know i just had the daughter here recently um so kind of want to put her in a church uh setting and stuff so we'll probably have her um bapt or not baptized i guess it was christening uh yeah catholic. i think uh so I'll probably have her christened uh sometime and so i was planning on uh converting myself i had thought about converting to catholicism when i was a kid because all my friends were catholic <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you went to catholic school yeah i bet yeah so all my friends were catholic and i was in catholic church all the time and stuff um uh, my dad would not have been happy for me to convert to catholicism probably um uh, catholicism not necessarily the most popular uh thing in southern baptist uh lore or whatever but um you know i always had a good time there saint michael's is actually where i went to school there uh in west memphis so uh, i guess that's kind of my journey and again without getting too detailed or you know getting too um emotional or anything like that but uh we're gonna cry tonight I'm... we're gonna cry tonight on good night yeah, without getting <laughs> Well, I get into uh, too much into it like that, but yeah, that's that's the short of it. Well, speaking of like early on, if you don't know, like Goodnight Groper, it's it's normally an interview show. Um, so I had definitely a few questions for you. You know, starting sure. out, I mean, you have this very. I'm curious. You have this like. Uh, well, go ahead. Anonymous, anonymous sent three dollars. Imagine thinking a man who lost both parents in three years has anything to lose on the internet. <laughs> Cannot abort. <laughs> Well, yeah, I agree with you 100%. I, yeah, I've used a similar line, actually. Yeah, this is not shit compared to that, yeah. Well, uh, I'm curious, you know, you have this very, you have a broadcast persona. I think that, you know, I've told you a million times, and this is uh, something that I kind of appreciate about you. You have the shock jock radio style about you. Did you ever do broadcasting? No. No. Uh um, no, I never did broadcasting, uh, besides just being the class clown and just a loud mouth my whole life. Just an entertainer uh, your whole life. 
Yeah, sort of, kind of. Yeah, sort of the entertainment in the room or amongst the group. Uh, yeah, I'm just a natural loudmouth shit talker. I kind of always have been. Uh, didn't do any broadcasting, no, though. That's just. But I've watched, I've studied uh, media basically my whole life. Um, okay. Newspapers and tabloids and um, cable news and all that. Did was so, it? Uh, so how did that transition? How did how? What did you realize, or how did you realize that maybe this was something you wanted to get into? This live streaming culture, this online stuff. Like, where did that happen? How that begin? So it started with a little thing called GamerGate back in 2014. Oh yeah. Um, and actually, that's. Um, uh, we got a we got a big day tomorrow with another Gamergate figure, uh, Mr. Medicare there, uh, and uh, indeed uh, I came up on that same block, and uh, him and some others are promoting me. Milo Yiannopoulos uh, also came up through there. Sargon of Akkad, yep, yep. Mike Cernovich, you know the whole crap. Uh, Prison Planet, uh, Paul Joseph Watson came around through then. Of course, he was already known, but uh, he yep. was involved with it. You know the same. Uh, same bunch, and I was a blogger uh, for the RalphRetort.com, which I still have. I don't blog very often anymore, but that was what I did for a living, um, and I was kind of um, part of the written wing or the blogger wing of Gamergate, and I did streams back then, and some of them were well-received, but I just wasn't uh, as comfortable doing streams, really, to be honest with you. Um, and I don't know what, what it was. was your, what, what was your first venture? Because, you know, now you have the Ralph Retort. You got Tequila Sunrise. By the way, great names. I mean, that's what, I've, that's what I've realized is the hardest thing about starting a show isn't the show. It's coming up with a freaking name, dude. It's the worst. The name's very important. Uh, and I'm big on that, too. Naming and headlining and uh, titling, alliteration, all that stuff is a big part of everything I do, yeah. Um, I mean, the thing about it is I was on some huge streams with thousands of people um, yeah. during Gamergate, during those days, uh, a couple of them with Medicare, as a matter of fact. Um, <laughs> but I just never really was comfortable on those streams. And a lot of them, there would be a bunch of people on there, too, and they're all trying to get their shit in. And you have to talk over somebody to, to, to get heard a lot of the time. I just wasn't comfortable with my own voice, I guess, back then. Um, and as an internet figure in my own right, I kind of felt like I didn't belong, I guess, uh, in a certain way and <laughs> didn't... Um, it's so weird to think about now. It's crazy to think about now. Yeah, it is. Uh, but that's kind of how it felt. And also, like, I'm just happy to be at the dance, right? Like, I don't want to step on any toes or I don't want to speak over anybody or this or that. Where, you know, a lot of those people were just talking over everybody, right? I remember Oliver Campbell, who nobody remembers now. But uh, back then, I remember being on all these streams with him, and you just couldn't get a word in edgewise. And I'm just like, fuck. You know what I mean? Like, I would always leave being frustrated. Um, and... So I did a few of my own streams around that time, too. One or two of those had on Medicare, too. Some of these were big streams, but I just didn't feel it. Uh, and also, you didn't make any money off these streams, really. Um, so it was like, I'm not making any money, da 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 whatever. Now, if I had been smarter, you know, people like Sargon, Monday Matt, et cetera, well, they were ended up making money off AdSense, off these ads on YouTube, and they ended up being quite wealthy way before I ever made much money off all this shit mm. uh, because YouTube's more lucrative. But I just didn't have that mindset, I guess. Uh, and so I just mostly blogged for years. And um, I you don't make as much money blogging, by the way. Um, <laughs> but I just, I just like, specialized in that, basically. Uh, and I would do the kill stream. So I ended up having a big stream. A couple where, big did, streams. where did... Uh... Before you get into that, where did the Killstream name come from? The Killstream name uh, came from, and I've already told this story. I could have just took credit for, for it myself. I should have, but whatever. Um, <laughs> there was this uh, Twitter group uh, we had, which I did name, uh, and I called it the Kill Team. Oh, uh, nice. Instead of Seal Team. It was, uh, it was, it was the Kill Team. Uh, I don't know if it's Kill Team 6. I think it was just Kill Team, but I don't remember. It was either that or Kill Team 6. And... Um, 
I was in there. My ex-wife, who I shat on this morning, um, <laughs> some other people uh, were in there. A gator, I think, was in there. A faggot. Um, Margaret McLennan was in there. A uh, big titty chick who used to write for uh, Milo as a ghostwriter, and um, she said, "Why don't you call it the Kill Stream?" And uh, I said, "Boom, that's it." Didn't even, I was I was like, what should I call the stream? We're gonna do a new weekly stream. Da, 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 yeah. da, 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 da. And we had we had a few names. I had an idea. I I had done the Ralph Retort Live, which is kind of the kind of the precursor to the kill stream in a lot of ways, but um so she suggested kill stream and as soon as I saw it, I was like, boom. That's it. Uh so I immediately picked it up and when it first started, it was a weekly show and it was hosted by me, my ex wife, Nora, and a Canadian anti-feminist named Janet Bloomfield. Uh, and it was once a week, and it was not really what you see now, but there's sh shades of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so you see some of my early style, and it's not formatted in the same way, really. If you notice, um, really the kill stream is kind of, the, I won't say the same, but it's, Show starts up. I do an intro. We talk about a story. Da, 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 there's a guest. It wasn't as set up professionally. Uh, well, you know, or hopefully a little slightly professionally uh, <laughs> as it is now. Well, also, right? hopefully you've you've improved a little bit. You know, yeah, over over the years. And I, I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Um, so uh, anyway, that happened. Doing it once a week. I had my run in with the law there in Loudoun County. I uh, was drunk on the hotel couch, uh, didn't know what was happening. They woke me up. I took a swing at the Mexican officer there. Male Mexican officer, by the way. Uh, Kiwi Farms just made up that it was female and literally just kept repeating it until other people repeated it. But no, it was not a female. <laughs> not that I would give a fuck if it was, honestly. Who gives a shit? But whatever. Um, so I ended up having fucked up. It's very fucked up. But I had to do eight months in jail. Ooh. Uh, off the yeah and so i got out and uh i swear to god there were groundhogs outside my window the every fucking day that i was in there and i could actually there was like a colony of groundhogs that lived outside the window in the jail yard i'm not kidding and i was originally supposed to get out on january 27th but they recalculated my time after i was in there for a couple months and said they fucked up and that they had to keep me longer no the, way God, by the way, this is like the most soul crushing thing. It doesn't matter. Bruh. Just like an extra week and a half or whatever it was. Dude, that's like 10 more days or whatever in fucking jail. Trust me. That's a bullshit, dude. That's like, what yeah, a tease. Like something. Yeah, but it's still, it was brutal. So it went from <laughs> that to February 2nd, though. So I literally walked out of this place where I could see the groundhogs every fucking day on Groundhog Day. I shit you not, Groundhog Day 2018. And I'd already heard about internet blood sports. My ex-wife had kind of keep me kept me up to date on it a little bit. Um, so I knew about this trend that was kind of taking over and what have you. And I got out and a lot of as soon as I got out, a lot of my followers, et cetera, um, were like, you got to get in on internet blood sports. This was made for you, right? Basically, you were already doing it, but it was prototype, all this stuff. So I watched, I turned on an episode of the morning Kumite the next day, um, and I just watched it, and I watched all these super chats rolling in, uh, and basically they made more money in that show than I had made off like a month and a half, two months of blogging. Mm. Uh in one day yeah in two, three hours and uh i said this i gotta get in <laughs> right i mean i'm doing the wrong thing uh <laughs> yeah, no, right? like, this is not this is not uh i'm missing out i guess you could say right like <laughs> i need to refocus efforts i had already planned to uh to do that but uh so if we changed the kill stream to three by the way when i went to jail nobody was making money really off live streams. I guess if you were on Twitch, maybe, but YouTube live streams didn't really have the funding aspect that they have now. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't as given. It wasn't as much a part of the, of the watch experience, um, at all. Super chats didn't even exist. So 
And yes, that's Marcus Aurelius behind me. I took that at the Met Museum in New York. I took that picture in the Met Museum uh, in New York City. So I saw somebody talking about it in chat. <laughs> um, so it was three days a week, and uh, things were building up a little bit. And then uh, the Baked Alaska thing happened, uh, actually. Um, and then the kill stream uh, blew up kind of uh, from there. And um, I, I guess the rest is sort of history. And I have made a full time living off of streaming since then. Since uh, Damn. it's like April 2018. Damn. Well, good for you, man. We got some super chats here. Uh, some, we got some questions from, from the audience. Uh, uh, right here, we got to uh, tell the story from uh, Zweeble. Thank you for the five, by the way. He says, tell the story of how you came up with the name Ralph Retort. I remember, but the new guys might find it funny. I don't know this story. What's the story here? Uh, you know what? Actually, this <laughs> I hate to spoil, but this is not actually how I came up with the name of the Ralph Retort. How I came up with the name of the Ralph Retort is it's like a takeoff of the Drudge Retort. And I think there was... Uh, there was a site called the Drudge Retort, which is like a take, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, take off on Judge Drudge Report, obviously. Uh, and so mine was a take off on theirs, uh, actually, is where that came from. But the story itself, um, basically, I was telling a story um, on one of the old kill streams. I don't even know if we still have this one. And uh, it was me, my ex wife, and Janet Bloomfield. And I was telling this story about how my ex girlfriend was sucking my dick and she was just you know going all out going to town oh my god you know, it was sloppy man it was sloppy it was sloppy and it was really sloppy and so Bro. at a certain point she starts <laughs> at a certain point she starts she starts gagging right and like choking a little bit and then oh all, of a sudden, god, dude. all of a sudden she just throws up all over my dick no no but, dude yes yes but <laughs> but instead of stopping instead of stopping she keeps going and going <laughs> and going until she gets that nut and i told that story on air <laughs> <laughs> and now you told it now it's on my show now it's on my show. <laughs> and uh janet bloomfield goes now that's what you call a ralph retort or whatever at the end of the story uh and of course everybody lost their shit and uh so that's the that's the new definition of a ralph retort you know <laughs> and then the sip, and then the sip is that is that champagne? Did you are you still, are you so? No, it's just uh, pink lemonade, actually. Oh, okay. I saw the clip of you. Oh, did you see that? Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. That was freaking sick. Um, wow. Okay. So you were doing uh, you were doing these internet blood sports. How would you say? Do you think the culture, just internet culture in general, um. How how much has it changed? Because when I was, during this time, I was in high school. I was watching Andy Worski, not because of blood sports, but because of his feminist right. SJW roast videos. You know, I was watching Milo and Ben Shapiro and these guys. So I wasn't a big part of this at all. I was like slightly, I was slightly aware that internet blood sports existed because I saw like streams every now and then would pop up in my recommended. But how would you say the culture has shifted? Do you think it's become uh, worse or better off? Um, in which way? Maybe in a it just like take it from a content perspective. Um, I think um, even just over the last year, it's become better. Uh, before that, it was like you know, um, even I would say it was freer in 2018 and it just it was more like a vice grip vice grip vice grip constrict content constrict all the way till january 6th and then it blew everything up and it was still kind of constrictive uh but now i think we have our own spots to a degree and thankfully we're able to still you know get super chats and stuff which is a big part of it of course no kidding um 
And so I, I think we're kind of settled down now uh, on Cozy, on Odyssey, on some of these all platforms, on, you know, uh, Telegram even. Um, I think that um, I have enough infrastructure to survive a lot, uh, honestly. Now, is it foolproof? No, because let's just be real. They could just decide to wipe all this shit out. You know, one day, <laughs> right? They or, can or lit, I mean, they, they there are like means in in these, uh, you know, through these people who who run the NWO and all its and you know plans and whatnot. I mean, these people literally have the keys to the internet. There are literal keys to the right. internet. They could shut it all off tomorrow. Could be over. But <laughs> yeah, again, I don't want to, you know, act like anything's foolproof. Yeah. I don't think it is. Uh, I think that would be retarded. You know, some other big event they can um propagandize whatever but i think we're in a pretty good spot i think cozy just where it's come from since october is amazing uh, you really don't have to leave cozy at all during the day if you don't want to uh, you know what i mean like there's yeah. stuff right like there's stuff all day long for everybody pretty much and uh the replays are, are there i think it looks slick on the front page um, I think it's it's also kind of like our, like the bunker too, you know what I mean? Like we're good over here at Cozy. Um, you know, it's gonna take a nuclear blast to take us out. Even yeah, right now. Yeah. The right? branding uh, looks great. Look at that. Look at that branding too for Cozy yeah. TV. Oh, huh? that looks there sick. We go. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And of course, you know Nick uh, always been cool to me. Um, I, I was thinking, I don't know this whole this whole week has been a little surreal because it, it felt like <laughs> it was like they felt like they had me uh, in retreat almost. You know what I mean? Like ah, oh, he's over on cozy. Like we almost got him. You know what I mean? Like this is all he has left or whatever. He's on the run. Now we just have to get Nick to denounce him. Now we just have to get them to turn on him. And instead of that, um, they actually riled up the hornet's nest uh, against them. And I remember it was so funny after he said what he said about uh, Medicare. They got they were really quiet and stunned, just almost dumbfounded. Uh, they couldn't even believe that he had said, <laughs> he had said those things. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, what? like they're just astonished. Um, and of course, uh, they want to, you know, put it, blame it all on me or whatever. But so like I said, I think, um, I think this has been a long time coming. Well, uh, okay. Actually. Well, well, if it's gotten better in terms of content, do you think maybe it's yeah, a last year it has? Yeah. Do you think it's a bit more toxic though now? Like yes. there's a lot of the IRL stuff happening and you've kind of, I mean, like you, you've been in this shit for a long time. You've been, you've been, you know, involved in and countless amounts of blood sport drama on the internet. And, you know, that's just something that you've done. Um, and you've also been attacked IRL. I mean, you know, crazy stuff happens all the time. Do you think that it's gotten worse? Um, yeah. I mean, you know, um, just without sugarcoating it. Uh, I mean, there's no reason to sugarcoat it. Um, a lot of people want to see me dead. Uh, and they openly say that, and it's not a joke. <laughs> yeah, I know. True, yeah. And so anybody who says it is, they say it's just jokes. It's not. It's not just jokes. They literally want to see me dead. Um, if that guy had pulled out a knife at that place and stabbed me, there would have been nothing I could do about it. It would just be like, you know, he's dead, right? Um, and again, I don't – that doesn't stop me. I never, I never would let that dissuade me from doing anything. Um, and it never will. Yeah, you're kind of confrontative. You're like that. Yeah. Arrest him! Arrest, Arrest him! him. What, yeah. What kill me, bitch? That's that's how I feel. <laughs> uh, and so that's just how I've always lived my life. But uh, yeah, I mean, I got swatted like four times last week, or wait, one time this week, three times last week. Um, you know, they came out guns bla actually blazing at my house. Um, so yeah, I'd say the the heat has been turned up. Uh, a lot, uh, and I don't think Damn. you know. There's a lot of people who couldn't probably hang with this. We got so. another super chat here from anonymous. Thank you for the three, buddy. Says, "Yo, Tennessee X, Virginia, Southern gripers rise <laughs> up." <laughs> Amen, brother. Southern pride. You know 100%. it. Southern by the grace of God. <laughs> uh, Virginia, thank you for the three. He says, "Oh, seven Dalton and Ralph." Sorry if you're tired of talking about it, but what exactly happened between you and uh, uh, Rackets? Rec 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 
Rackets. Um, Rackets. Uh, he says, I know that he's kind of a Lulbert faggot, but I'm not full informed on the lore. Take care and God bless. I want to add before you answer that too. He sends another three and says, obligatory second super chat to get Joker return. Let's FG, uh, LFG 07 Dalton 07, buddy. Sorry to hear that you lost your job. Um, I mean, yeah, that's old news, but thank you, buddy. Anyway, no. Yeah, what's this about? Um, well, um, Rikeda met him kind of through Dick and he started coming on the show, never had any issues with him. Basically we kind of promoted him, helped him get bigger. Um, but I, you know, I was never, I like to see people succeed that came through our show. It's never bitterness. It's never, Oh, oh I'm mad. No, I'm happy. Actually. Uh, it makes my show look better. The more fucking stars that come out of it. But anyway, leaving that out, um, I had a legal issue. Uh, it's been well documented and talked about um, concerning an uh, ex girlfriend of mine. And he said he was going to represent me uh, on that case. We had discussions about it. Um, then he went on air with Ashton Parks, who's PPP, uh, and said he thought I was guilty, um, which, you know, he was kind of you know, drawn out into that, but he basically did that to play to the mob, which his crowd and PPP's crowd anti me, of course. Um, and you know, it's his, it's his right to say that if, you know, he hadn't claimed to be my lawyer, he didn't give me counsel, et cetera. And promised to me personally that he wasn't going to do that. Right. Comment on my case publicly. Um, and he even said, if I get super chats, I'm going to say, I can't talk about it, et cetera. All this is, you know, I have all these screenshots or whatever. So that happened. I let it go. The case ended up getting dropped. It got brought back later uh, on some bullshit, if you want to know the truth. But it did get brought back. But anyway, it got dropped. So I kind of was just like, oh, whatever. Just let it go. Um, but this guy's just always amplifying bullshit from Kiwi Farms. Lies. Just straight out lies. Always mm -hmm. undermining. Always just like trying to play the faggot side basically um and i did that 24-hour stream that of course they tried to say i shit myself or farted or whatever they tried to say which i didn't do if i had done i would just say i think probably like half a million people have seen my dick like do you think i give a fuck about farting on air like i mean it's just the dumbest fucking thing of all time the reason it pissed me off though is because that was like the talking point the phony you know narrative they settled on to try to take attention off the fucking fuck trolo festival that went amazingly uh we had all kinds of cool guests and 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 neat shit going on uh talked to, like just i remember over. that it was, yeah it was just a fun show yeah that was and a blast then, and then they settle on oh this guy shit himself or whatever it's like no i didn't and i you know i have a real problem they're like well why didn't you just laugh at it well okay it's not true that's why uh and so you're right i could just laugh at something that's fake and just roll along with the with the fakeness but i'm not gonna do that and maybe it will you know i sit and think about it. i have thought about it because like oh well you know i could have just oh lol you know whatever but that didn't ha it's not what happened right and i do have a really and you know my haters know this i have a real problem with not responding to something that i know is false you know what i mean like i yeah. just it's really hard for me not to correct the record on something crazy and you know i just didn't i knew why they were doing it and it was to diminish um and it didn't happen and so uh, you know he he went along with that and was like laughing with it and playing it on his show and so the next day i went out and went nuclear um and also brought up the stuff from before now he you know some of my haters tried to say i retconned that or whatever i wasn't pissed off about that at the time yes i absolutely was and i have dms where i was uh arguing about it with him too but i just let it go because it's like okay yeah. whatever i'll just let it go what am i gonna do take him to the fucking bar in minnesota like why he doesn't even practice law like it's not even worth it and it wouldn't wouldn't be worth it anyway he's a lawyer like what the fuck you know what i mean like it's not it's i don't know it's just not worth it in the first place so yeah i did try to let it go but you know you just 
I don't know, man. Just a, enough undermining, enough bullshit. To kind of how a lot of this goes, huh? It's just kind of how it's the nature of the beast. It's a lot of this shit is it's the if same I wish way. Everybody got along and there wasn't all this bullshit. Yeah, it, it would be kind of cool, but that's just not how life works. Yeah. Uh, so. Well, we're about to get in here into the call section of the show. But before we do, uh, Ralph, we do a segment here on Goodnight Groiper called Based or Cringe. A friend of mine, even more based, comes on the show. He lists off topics or people or whatever. And uh, we give, you know, our take. Is it based or cringe? Are you down to play? Yeah, I'm down to play. All right. We'll bring on even more based here. And let's roll it. You know what, man? I don't know what's going on with the audio tonight on some of these fucking slides, but they're all fucked up. So, whatever. We'll we'll do it without it. We'll just we'll fucking we'll do it live. We're just not even gonna do the fucking song, okay? I'm sorry. Unless you want to do it live, I know you can sing it live, but I can sing it live. I have the guitar right here. There we go. See, this is why I love this guy. Look at that. Look at that. Here, look here. I'll play the. Uh, I'll play. I'll play the. Base cringe, base or cringe, we're gonna find out if it's base or cringe. Base cringe, base or cringe, base or cringe, base or cringe, base or cringe. Ah, there you go, there you go. Base or cringe with even more base. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Big round of applause, of course, for this incredible guy. Does great work. We appreciate you. All right, let's get yeah, into it, dude. All right, real quick, you want to hear some some crazy uh, EMB lore? So we know that Kai was instrumental into sort of like the 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 beginnings, right? The the beginning lore. But this is pre EMB lore. The first time I was ever on Cozy. DD twelve. Hang on. Whoa, DD twelve. Thank you for the big thirty bomb. <laughs> big shout out, Big O seven. I appreciate it. Anyway, keep going. What you got? Right, so the first time I was ever on Cozy, this was uh, December 17th, 2021. It was before I even made content. Uh, I sang White Christmas uh, live on air on the Kill Stream, right, literally right before the Nick Fuentes and Dave Smith debate. And that was, did it on uh, the Kill Stream? I did it on the Kill Stream. Yeah, I have a video of it too. If you ever want to see it, I see it's in your DMs and in, in Instagram. It, actually. it was good. Yeah, he's talented. That's cack. That's I awesome. I remember it so much because that's one of the best songs on the show. Yeah, I remember that. Some people in chat remember it too. That's awesome, man. That's great. Yeah, ancient lore. And then uh, my first two ever uploads were clips of Ralph. It was yeah. Ralph and Vito just shooting the shit. And uh, yeah, R Ralph. Is, I've called him a million times on the show. Uh, I love this Gooba so much, uh, and I think he makes some of the best content, so I'm really happy to do this. Yeah, he's uh, yeah. We're, we're We love Ralph. Thank you, man. So, yeah. Based or cringe, you ready to play? Yep. Let's do it. I'm ready. All right. <laughs> Starting off strong. Based or cringe, call it. Big League Chew. Based. Yeah, so based. Come on, man. Talking about the, oh, wait, wait. The big league, so you mean like the shredded bubble gum? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's based. Yeah. I would choose some of that right now. I want some big league. <laughs> right now. I used to be a kid, and I'd go around, I'd have the big <laughs> wad of bubble gum shaw. Of course, I was a, I played baseball as a kid, too, so I was always out at the, the we call it the complex in West Memphis with all these baseball fields and shit. Uh, but yeah, Big League Chew is based. Dude, I could, you know, it's crazy. I can see you eating Big League yeah. Chew even to this day, bro. I can definitely Look see that. Pickle too. Oh, man, some nachos. God, I used to love going out to the fucking Little League games. Of course, I'd be playing in some of them, but I would go out even when I didn't play. Let's go. Uh, yeah, yeah, 100% based. based. Yeah, I'm with you, based. All right, next. Yeah, you know, you, you pull out a you pull out some gum, and everybody wants some gum, but it, like you know, you only have so much. But Big League Chew, you have enough to go around. I like, I like that. That's right. That's right. right. So, 
pink bubble gum <clears throat> too. Just like, mm. <laughs> pack a lip, pack a lip real quick. Yeah, All right, so the uh, on the inside there on big league chair. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the ne- the next one I have based your cringe. Uh, wearing a seatbelt. Based. Mm. I'll tell you why I say that before he answers. Uh, because the seatbelt saved my life like three or four times. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, you know what? Definitely hey. based, though. Definitely based. I'm a big seatbelt respecter, ladies and gentlemen. I always have my seatbelt on. Uh, and I know a lot of people make fun of my driving or say I'm reckless or whatever. Uh, I'm not, by the way. I'm perfectly fine. But uh, I rode in the car with Ralph at Afpac. Fine driver. Yeah, exactly. okay. But I do wear that safe belt, as Kanye would say, there and through the wire. Yes, I to say the safe, safety belt is based. Yeah, I'm going to say based as well. Uh, I don't know if it should be forced. You know, I don't know if it should be well, law. I, you know why? I, I don't think it should be forced, and, and I'll tell you why. Because police just use it as an excuse to pull people over. True, uh, yeah. And it's just a way to search your car, get you arrested. Um, and so, no, I'm not in favor of it being forced. But... Wearing that being one. said, wear your seatbelt or you're an idiot. True. Yeah. Absolutely agree. It's based. Yeah. All right. Next. What do we got? All right. Based or cringe bath bombs. <laughs> cringe, unless you're a woman. Like, I mean, I don't understand if you're. Right? Like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. If you're a bitch, maybe you'll light your candles, throw your bath bomb in or whatever. Like, I don't understand the guy. <laughs> Like, what? Maybe, I, maybe I had the bitches washing my dick and shit, like on coming to America or whatever. The royal <laughs> penis is clean, your highness. Maybe some shit like that. Is that a thing? Are guys out here using bath bombs? Is that? There's no way that's a thing. Where did that come from? There's no is way that that's real. Trend? Oh, oh dude, I can't. I don't even remember the last time I took like a bath. I take showers, but I don't know. I literally bath. was talking you know because a nice bath, and um, I don't remember if it was Vegas or or. or no, I think it was Orlando, uh, and you were there at that suite, but I don't think you saw the the tub back there. And there was a big, like, you know, nice bathtub. Um, I don't remember if pants who used it or not, but I was sitting there thinking, when's the last time I took a full bath? And it's been a minute, man. It's probably been like I don't know, five or ten years uh, since no, I. I so I have the, I have the bathtub with the jets oh, in my yeah. house. So, yeah, if you have a bathtub like that. It's like a little jacuzzi. Um, I do it like once every two months, probably. Yeah, okay. That's not as bad. See, if you have a jacuzzi tub, that makes sense. But just like a regular tub. Um, yeah. Um, now, the one in Orlando <laughs> was a jacuzzi tub. See, that'd be cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I almost did it, but it's just been so long, man. I haven't had a, a nice. Maybe I'll take a nice bath this Sunday after Medicare's buried, after we do the debate on Saturday. <laughs> I, I got a big debate on Saturday night. Adam Green, E. Michael Jones. Oh, and that's going to be a good one. Originally, that was going to be my big day of the week, but then this Medicare versus Nick thing happened. Mm. Um, and so the, I was going to be in Atlantic City tomorrow night, actually, uh, at the Compound Media thing p- with Pat Dixon. Um but then all this happened, and I said, oh, I can't leave. <laughs> I need yeah. to be here. I need to be here at Killstream Studios. See, all right, I want to go ahead and let everybody know. Ralph, king of content over here, okay? So go show him some love. Go over to Cozy.tv forward slash Ethan Ralph. Go give him a follow. Of course, he's going to plug all his stuff before he leaves tonight. But I just sure. wanted to go ahead and throw that out here. You guys, see, The guy's got always a great lineup, so big shout out. And he's a big inspiration. Um, all right. Thank you. What you got next? Oh, I just wanted to say uh, I really like when uh, women put yellow bath bombs in their shit, and then it just looks like they're bathing in piss. That's like the that's you the funniest that? thing to me because I, no no one ever, I don't love it. It's just hilarious. Like no one really thinks this through. Like, I got this nice relaxing. <laughs> I, knew, bath of piss. I knew that's where he was going. I wasn't gonna say it. I knew that's where he was going. Diddy 12, thank you for the dead. He says, can't abort. So true. I knew he, that's where he was going. I can see his face. And he was like, is he doing it? Yeah, he's doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What you got? All right. Next one. Based or cringe, Ashton Kutcher. Cringe. I'm saying LA. cringe. I love that 70s show. I just don't like him. 
I don't know, man. Did he do all that exposed? Like he exposed like all the pedophile stuff, you know? Didn't he? Uh, I guess like he's anti-sex slavery or some shit. Yeah, sex trafficking. I don't know. I don't like him. He took Charlie Sheen's place. Two and a half men sucked immediately. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, it's unwatchable. His shows, the ones with him on them, are unwatchable. The ones with Charlie Sheen, every single one's watchable. Every single one's hilarious. Now some of them are like gutter. (laughs) Like trash, <laughs> but I mean they're still funny, right? Um, as soon as he's on there, it's fagged up. I don't know. I can't. I just can't. Now I do love that '70s show, and you know Kelso or whatever. He's okay as Kelso, I guess. But uh, pretty good. I would say he's pretty good. I, I w- <sighs> yeah. Okay, maybe it's not worth a based. Is he fully based though? That's Butterf- what I'm saying. Maybe it's not based. Maybe it's just. I don't know. Maybe not cringe. He's in the metal. He's like he's somewhere in the metal. Punk was pretty bass. That's true. Okay, punk was kind of bass. The ranch. How'd you feel at the ranch? I didn't see the ranch. Yeah, I didn't get really into that either. Yeah, punk. Punk was cool. Punk was pretty funny. Yeah, punk. I liked punk. Didn't it used to it used to come on with Jackass? In yeah. The tent, I think right. They would show punk and Jackass. Um, yeah, I liked punk. You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to say bass just because the guy's done a fucking lot that I have enjoyed. That's fair. That's fair. But I just, man, two and a half men, that run just really soured <laughs> me. I don't know. And then what has he done since then? True. Uh, true. Yeah. Nothing. So. All right. Well, all right. Next, what you got? All right. Based or cringe gift cards. Cringe. I think they're cringe, man. I just, they're always a pain in the ass. Just give me money. That's what I'm saying. What's the point of a fucking gift? $20 gift card to fucking yeah. Best Buy. Great. Like, right. you couldn't have given me $20 to go to Best Buy. That's what, you know what? Exactly. I literally got a $25 card that was so much trouble to redeem. Like, the code wasn't working and all this shit. Now, I finally did get it redeemed, but it's like, dude, it was a $20 card. I mean, again, I don't throw away $20. Don't get me wrong. I'm not Daddy Warbucks over here, but it's like... It's a real pain in the ass for twenty fucking dollars. It's extra steps. It's extra steps that you don't need. And I don't know why, like these old, like old people love this shit. Yeah, they do. I don't know if it's like because it's a card, it's like fancy or like what the fucking gimmick is. But where are the idea? Where did the where did the idea even come from, man? Plus, as you're locked into a certain store, a certain ecosystem, just that's give like, me money. That's what I'm saying. Where is the idea? Somebody. F- Somebody came up with the idea. Hey, yeah, I'm going to create a card that has money on it, but you can only spend it in my store. You can fuck. Go suck a cock. Go suck a cock. Are you kidding me? That idea in the first place? Yeah, they're fucking evil. Because before that, people were just giving money. Yeah. These guys are scumbags. (laughs) These guys are fucking scumbags. Could you imagine somebody had the ability to super chat fucking gift cards? I'd I'd blow my fucking head off. Here's a oh, super dude. chat, but you can only spend it at GameStop. Oh, yeah, let me go kill myself real quick. How about that? Oh, it's like that Chappelle skit where he talks about Disney dollars, where he goes down yeah. to Disney and they're like, they don't take fucking United States currency anywhere. So he has to he has to buy Disney dollars and spend those around. He's like, I can't. What was the line he said? <laughs> you can't buy a pussy and weed with, <laughs> with Disney with dollars. Disney. I, don't want any, I don't want any fucking Disney <laughs> dollars. Get the fuck away from me. <laughs> Uh, yeah I'm that like, is a good point actually you give gift cards to like alcoholics and drug addicts because you know you just can't give them money they're, they're not gonna go anywhere else with it <laughs> <laughs> that's Classic. pretty good that one, I guess we, god <sighs> that's guess pretty good drink it up this holiday season well, like they got dd12 thank you for the titties for blockbuster only great yeah that's fantastic <laughs> that'd be <laughs> that'd be hell unironically thinking of that just makes me want to throw up I wish there were blockbusters still, though. I'm gonna sound. I'm one of those '90s freaks. <sighs> no, I'm with you. Blockbusters, yeah. There's help. a whole culture behind. It's just fun. It's yeah. weird. I can't help, but I miss blockbuster. I miss. I miss going in there on Friday, fucking trying to get in there early, get those red top movies. Yeah, good times. So I had memory like just going in there with my parents and stuff, and that's where I first got Saints Row the Third. I remember getting that at at uh, oh, wow. Blockbuster. Yeah, it just was really cool. There's cool stuff. Memories around the like going to Blockbuster and oh, after we're getting some tacos, we're getting some pizza, whatever, going back, watching movies. Like, I guess it's more of that, really. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, nostalgia. Was, 
Yeah, it's the nostalgia. It's the nostalgia. I will say this. Mad Men season one, one, one of the best scenes in television history. Uh, it's from the episode called The Carousel, and it's the season finale in season one. And he goes through and he talks about nostalgia uh, and nostalgia's power. As a, as a Dude, season. I knew exactly what you were going to say. That is my favorite show of all uh, time. I love Mad Men. Of course, it's one of my favorite shows, too. Top three. The best. That, Sopranos and The Wire are pretty much my favorite three shows but nice. um yeah and mad men god i didn't know you were a mad men guy okay my respect was already very yeah, high no i i blew out the chart yeah i i love mad men dude i was so disappointed when they took it off netflix i don't even know where like because i want to go back and watch i don't know where to find it anymore like yeah it's like, on um fuck is it hbo i don't remember where they put it now somebody paid the thing. Just um but yeah, I love that. Anyway, the the finale scene basically uh, from that episode where he goes through and he talks about nostalgia um, and how it uh, has a power to engage you in a way that nothing else really does. Yeah, uh, and it's very true. All right, even more based. What do we got next? All right, the next one I have is nuclear energy. Based or cringe? I say based. I'm going to say very based. Yeah, we need more nuclear en energy. Also, I see somebody says Mad Men's overrated. That's not true, actually, but um, <laughs> the first four seasons are just, like, perfect, and then it is – it's still great, in my opinion, but it's not as great. I know a lot of people love the ending of Mad Men. I'm one of these guys, I actually – I kind of wish I, I wish it could have been done differently. but Really? Yeah. I you know, know what? I, I loved it, but it was also, like – so I loved it, but it was kind of like the carny way out too. You know what I mean? Like, cause Corbin sent twenty dollars. Mad Men is on Amazon. Oh, oh it's okay. There you go. Anyway, also, keep going. Also, spoiler alert. If you want to turn, if you don't want to the end and you haven't seen it, turn it off now. Yeah, yeah. But, mute the stream. Yeah. <laughs> Come back here in five, uh, ten seconds. But basically, it ends and he's there uh, and he's having he's had a breakdown. You think he might kill himself, really? Mm -hmm. um, leading up to that, and, and um, really, Peggy's the only one he has left on the phone there. Um, but instead of having a breakdown, um, he kind of finds himself and he's sitting there in a yoga pose and just like zend out, and he thinks of the coke ad uh basically i'd love to buy the world a coke whatever teach him to smile or whatever the fuck yeah uh anyway it's like one of the most famous ads ever if not the most famous ad ever and so that's the punchline basically the <laughs> the don draper always wins <laughs> yeah yeah literally yeah, yeah, that's the that's the that's the end of the movie. This basically the Don Draper always wins, and somehow he fucking recovered again. And in this fucking madness, he just thought of his biggest money idea. And so, and that's also everybody knows that's one of the biggest ads too. So it's true. Yeah, no, you know, maybe maybe I need to go back because I was in, I was probably freshman in high school when I watched that show for the first time. I should probably go back and watch it. Um, and now that I know it's on Amazon, I'll definitely go check it out. Thank you, uh, Corbin, for the $20 super chat letting us know. That means a lot. Also, Virginian with $2 says Mad Men also has Polly, one of the most satisfying endings uh, ever, at least in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. And it was just leading up to him killing himself, too. It was just leading up to complete devastation or let down ending. And then it's just like, oh, he wins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Uh, but I will say that also... Um, they kind of took, not that they did involve real, real world stuff. They did all the time, but they took a very famous ad campaign specifically attributed straight to him. Um, and it was kind of like a deus ex ending, uh, deus ex machina, like, um, which is like, a, it's not, a, I guess it's technically to be a deus ex, it has to be a character, right? I think that comes out of nowhere, but I'm not sure if it can be a plot development. Or not, but that is kind of a plot development that comes out of nowhere with no, um, with no warning, right? They're not talking about Coca Cola. I yeah, don't think, I don't recall. I have to go back and watch those last couple episodes, but I don't think Coke's even on the radar. 
if I can recall correctly, and it's kind of just like, oh, he it's just thrown out there. Him. That that was my. I was like, okay, what? Coke hasn't been in the show at all, but cool, great. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's kind of like, uh, where did this Coke thing come from? Like that wasn't really talked about. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I agree with you in that regard that it was a little forced. It, I felt it felt forced well, to me. Yeah, it was all right. I was like, oh, the Coke ad. Like, of course, that's what we're gonna do. Do the Coke ad, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're uh, but also, I still, I still kind of liked it. I see Boardwalk Empire. The first two seasons of Boardwalk Empire. Spoiler never alert! Uh, until they kill. Uh, I've never Pitt. seen it. Huh? I've never seen it. What are you doing? You're gonna spoil I'm it for sorry. me? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. I probably never will. I don't know what this show is. <laughs> but uh, after that, it went downhill. But. That was crazy. Oh, my God. There's a storyline there. Oh, I don't, never mind. If you're going to watch it, I won't tell you. But one of the sickest storylines in modern television, I would say. Mm. Even more based. You got another one for us? Yep. Uh, the next one I have is uh, shitting on company time. Shit breaks. Paid shit. Based. 100% based. Yeah. I don't know how you could be against that. It's like smoke yeah. breaks. Yeah, exactly. Hey, I gotta go smoke. Right. That's the thing. I got jealous. That's why I started smoking. I smoked for four years. Yeah, I heard somebody else tell me that before. Like they literally started smoking so they could get more breaks at work. Yeah, everybody at work smoked, and then they would. I worked in radio, right? So every song is about as long as a cigarette smoke. <laughs> so they just go outside and smoke a cigarette, come back in, do their like you're listening to ninety five point six, the Wolf. <laughs> And then they'd go outside and smoke another one. Yeah, I know a lot. I know some people <laughs> told me that. I see some people in chat saying that too. Yeah. At that point, though, I feel like you're probably you're probably spending more money <laughs> with all the cigarettes you're smoking uh, than you're making on the job. However, good idea, good plan. <laughs> you know, I think. Uh, yeah, that's so expensive now too. It's like, oh, uh, I remember when I moved to South Carolina in like what was it, 2006. And they had gotten up to like five dollars a pack in Arkansas and Tennessee, um, but they were like two fifty or something crazy, like crazy low, two twenty five in South Carolina. And now they've raised them back up now because mm. the, the taxes raised, it. and everybody smoked in South Carolina. I mean, like it was wild, but now they've raised the taxes and it costs a shit ton. So yeah, everywhere almost. I mean, it's ridiculous. I had to quit. Um, I anyway. might just start smoking uh, just uh, in between all of these based and cringe uh, questions. You know? <laughs> yeah, I might dude. pick up a habit. Yeah. All right. Well, what's your next one? You got another one? <laughs> the next one I have is juicing. Uh, and I don't mean like uh, like steroids or stimulants or anything like that. Juicing, like vegetable juicing uh, or fruit juicing. I mean, steroids. Right? Ginger. Uh, Wait, what? What did you say about steroids? Steroids are based. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> steroids are awesome, dude. Yeah, I mean, steroids are awesome. Juicing sounds gay. I mean, I, I've heard that it's good. I, I remember Cernovich was talking about that. But if you're, like, always talking about your juicer and shit, that sounds gay. Yeah, you're like, hey, guys, check out my new juicer. Yeah. How about I shove that juicer down your throat and kill yeah, you? Yeah, look at this mix that I have here. I'm like, oh, get that slop out of my face. I will. Like, I'm a, I like smoothies. Yeah, I do too. I don't know if that's gay, but I do like smoothies. I, I you know, I don't ever have them because I don't have like time. I'm not gonna sit down and like get blueberries and all this other shit and throw it together and have a smoothie. That just seems like a waste of time. Maybe have my wife make me one. I guess. That's woman's work. They yeah. Should do that. 100%. Yeah, I'm going to say cringe. All right, next. Based or cringe, fur coats. I feel like you're going to say base. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say. Come on. You know I'm going to say 1,000% base. I'm going to say base, too. Those shits are sick. Can you imagine? I'm that, you know what the, my first thought was? I wish I had a big fur coat to wear tomorrow. That was the first thought. That was, uh, I was like, I wish I had a big fur coat to wear now. <laughs> Can I just wear one all the time? That'd be sick. I'm going to try to wear the cowboy hat tomorrow. You know, these these don't really fit that well with the cowboy hat because I have to wear them around here, though. And they don't want to, like, yeah. 
they kind of fall off a little bit. I mean, I can do it, but it's just not as comfortable. So I might get out the Bluetooth headset because I've already. See, I was say, there you go. Get out the Bluetooth headset. Yeah, the I don't know if you have like AirPods or something. Yeah, I do, but they'll die uh, in the middle of a twelve-hour show. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe I'll switch over towards the end or something. Don't know goal for the cowboy hat. Yeah, I don't know. I was thinking about it earlier, but I'll figure it out. We'll figure yeah. it out. Semantics, semantics. Yeah. All You're right. Just- What's up next? What do we got? Next one I have is hookah. Based uh, cringe. I'm gonna say cringe. I'm gonna say cringe too. And um, <clears throat> I, I remember I bought a hookah when I was like, I don't know, how was I? Maybe like sixteen, seventeen. I don't remember. You're not supposed to buy hookahs when you're 16 or 17, by the way. But anyway, I did. And um, I didn't like it. I got it to smoke weed out of, actually. Uh, And it's just a waste of weed. You never really get that good of a hit. Now, they have hookah bars and stuff, too, which I don't know. I don't really like it. I don't really like it. Not my scene. I mean, come on. Can you imagine this at a hookah bar? Oh, dude, it's always... Yeah, it's... uh, Certain element, I guess you could say. That's a different uh, eth- ethnic activity, I think. Yeah, it's not really my scene. And again, hookah sucks. So it's like, mm, I don't know. I've always been more of a, I would rather smoke weed or something. <laughs> I don't know. That's me personally. Like, I, just don't, <laughs> I just don't get the. I just don't get that or smoke a cigarette. I, 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 I do get cigars. I've gotten to where I'm pretty big on cigars now. Um which That's what's I, up. I didn't used to be, but man, a good, a good cigar. Um, I don't know. Hookah. No, cringe. cigar for coat, cowboy hat. I mean, this is, this yeah. is Ralph. This is the Ralph male, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I'm talking about. It's Ralph, and I wish, you know, my uncle gave me this diamond ring. That was my, that was my grandpa's. I didn't have when I went to Dallas because I got on the way back. I wish I'd have had it when I went down there because it's kind of flashy. Yeah, it is uh, sick. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's pretty sick. It's so sick. I'm afraid to wear it around South Richmond a little bit. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't do most of the time, but every once in a while, I'm like, eh, it's a little late. Maybe I'll take this off. Um, but yeah, I guess I got the ensemble now. So yeah, I gotta get that hat out. All right, next. Yeah, speaking of hats, I never got that hat for singing that beautiful song, White Christmas. Oh, you didn't send me oh, your sh- or oh. did you? I'll, I'll, I'll put- I did. <laughs> oh, that's Fancy's fault. She's supposed to. <laughs> I will blame it on her. I'll blame it on any. Uh, just by default, I'll blame one. anything on a woman. Send we don't have any hats left, but I got shirts. So I'll send you a shirt. Sounds good. All right. You oh, know what? Huh? It was a it was a privilege to sing. Yeah, that that was a that was enough no, for me. Want Ed, Ed, Ed. If you want one, just email back though. Um, but she hasn't been checking it. Um, she was supposed to check. She said that you didn't send it. Maybe she just lied. She's a woman, so she probably just fucking lied. I bet Real. she lied. You know what women do? They do. They they lie. She's, they do this thing she, called lying. She probably thought it was funny that you didn't get your hat. <laughs> That's she so probably, fucked up. Yeah, she probably laughed that night. And said that little fucker's not getting his hat. What do you think? <laughs> If I could sing a song, you think you're gonna fucking hat, bitch? Why you think a free hat sing a fucking song? <laughs> sing this song. Someone paid it forward. Someone paid like sixty dollars and was like, "No, they did. They paid for it." Man, I have no problem sending you one. I don't have any actual hats now because they're gone. Um, oh, but there was only man. like one left at that time too. Mm. I forget what happened to the last one. I don't even know now that you mentioned it. There may be. One hat around here somewhere. Now that I think about it, maybe. But there's definitely some shirts, so I'll Let's send you a shirt. Just uh, email me back. Email my personal email, the Ralph at the Ralph and I'll send you one. Sounds good. There you go. All right, what do we got? We got any more? Yeah, we're already at the bonus round. Let's uh, go. So the bonus round, you gotta you gotta think think through a little bit. You know, don't just give a knee jerk, based or cringe reaction. So right. the bonus round, based or cringe, call it. Street evangelism. Street evangelism. I'm going to say based because uh, I do think it's really cool. Like sometimes I go down to Nashville and I see these guys out there with their signs and they're like, you're going, you know, you're going to hell. And I'm just like, 
I'm like, that guy's on my I'm like, that guy's on my side. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, I'm going to say based. I'm going to say based. So I'm going to say based because, for one, there's so much good footage and so many good clips that come from these uh, street proselytizers. But also. True. I'll say based, but with the caveat, door to door. Cringe. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's sure. fair. That is fair. Street preaching, I'm all for it. And actually, I usually, a lot of times I'll talk to them or whatever. Door to door preaching, I'm not all for. As a matter of fact, get the fuck away from my door and don't ever knock on it again. Uh, yeah. um, and you know what? I'm the type of guy, everybody, you know what's so funny is I'm known as like one of the meanest motherfuckers online, basically, and just psychopath. That's how they portray me and all this shit. Um, the reason I don't want them knocking on my door is because I ans if I answer it, I'm the type of guy that will actually sit there and fucking talk to these fucking assholes for 15 or 20 minutes just to not be an asshole, even though I should be. I'm the same way. I'm the same. And I'm just sitting there talking to them. Do you mind if we come back? And I'm just like, oh, my God. And it's fucking Jehovah's Witness or some shit. And it's I, like, I've never had it happen, but I know I'd be the same way. Because I'm that yeah. way with, with, like, security people salesmen. You know, I'll, I'll invite them in, and we'll have a long conversation. And my wife's like, why are you doing that? Like, can we just get this guy out of here? Can he just leave? Yeah, no, that's me. And by the time it's over, they've sold me something. Not not the church people. Uh, but <laughs> the door to door salesmen. They're like that, too. They're like, hold up, just let me talk. The bums are like that, too. I don't know. It's just something about me. They just know I'll talk to them longer. Some fucking guy fucking wanted me to give him a ride the other day. It's like, okay, just. It's also because you're white. They, they ask white people more, too. Oh, yeah, of course they do. Also, because. we're giving. Yeah. <sighs> But yeah, I, I think street preaching is based, but door to door, very unbased. True. Okay. All right, even more based. Thank you for doing the doing the uh, based or cringe segment. We appreciate you. We love you, man. Thanks. All right. God bless both of you guys. God bless you, buddy. Hey, man. God bless. Great guy. All right, we're gonna take a few callers here. Chat. We're not even close to the dono goal for for uh, for Sunday for the twenty four hour Beards and Beardly live stream, where I'm gonna dress up as the Joker. We reenact a scene from The Dark Knight. So you gotta get them in. Quite frankly, you gotta get them in, or it's not gonna fucking happen. And there's no there's no oh, our stream tomorrow. We can cover. It. Nope. I'm not going out there to buy some makeup and fucking all that. Not makeup, face paint and shit tomorrow. People are gonna be like, oh, fucking makeup. Anyway. Uh, let's get some callers on here. Mason for, well, let's just get, I see James the Groiper's been in here for a minute. James the Groiper, you're on Good Night Groiper. Go ahead. Then we'll get Mason. Hey, what's up? Holy Ethan. shit. You're loud. What? You're just loud. Uh, I'm so, all right, how about now? You're good. You're good. Hey, what's up, Dalton? What's up, Ethan? How you doing, friends? What's up, man? What's up? What's up? Love the show. Uh, wow, really inspirational, great show. One of the best so far. I do have to say it is one of the best. Good night, Groypers, up to date. Uh, I have to say that because it is. I have a few questions uh, for uh, Ethan Ralph. First of all, Ethan, I love your show. You know, I love the, uh, I love all of the content you put out. Um. I have a question for you, if you don't mind. Uh, I don't mind. Well, it depends on what question it is, but <laughs> in theory, no, I don't mind. Yeah. Uh, so, so first of all, I know you like to host debates. So that's correct, right? That is correct. Yeah. Okay. So when is? <laughs> well, we're all all the people are waiting. Um. James for, the Gorman, by the way, fucking debate. sucks. This is the worst caller on the show. He just fucking oh. sucks. <laughs> no, because this I don't is suck. what he I'm does. Awesome. No, no, no. This is what he does. He drags this shit on for like ten minutes, and I'm just it's like, like Johnny Depp on the stand today. Right? Yeah, so. yeah. James the Groiper's a lot like Johnny Depp. I wish, dude. I wish I beat my wife like him. <laughs> well, anyway. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so so Ethan Ralph, uh, oh my God. you know <laughs> the host. No, not the host, the, uh, the the guest of the yeah, show. I, uh, yeah. What's up? I said the guest tonight, but usually the host, yeah. Yeah, yeah usually those. That's, that's why I'm so used to I'm so used to calling you those. Anyway, let's get to the question, and I'll stop dilly-dallying. Um, 
<laughs> so yes. Uh, so when's the when is the debate between <laughs> the two most influential men <laughs> in the 21st century? The debate between Wayne Dupree and EDP 445 on nationalism versus uh, globalism. Santa Claus sent Holy $125 shit. in seven wow. Santa Claus coming through. Dude, it's early Christmas. Holy shit. Big O sevens. Uh, whoops. Wrong sound. Damn. My bad. Wanna be a baller. Wanna be a baller. Baller. That was like my favorite song in the eighth grade. I know every word to that song. Uh, I figured you would like that one. We do that for a hundred dollar donos and up. Thank you. Uh, yeah, bad away. All right, James. Bad away. Uh, yeah, yeah, shout out, James. Uh, so, so, did you hear the question, Ethan? No. No. Oh yeah, Wayne Dupree versus yeah. EDP. I mean, that doesn't seem likely. Uh, um, no, it doesn't. Is EDP even still active? I don't even know. Yeah, uh, dude. He was he if if uh, you know he was the guy you. he was the guy framed by the Jews. Okay, James, thank you for calling uh, in. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I have actually the serious question. <laughs> okay, one. All right, you get t- t- five so, seconds. You fucking dick. All right, so you know I know that was the serious question. Um, you know, but a little bit of a easy going question here. You know, after the Wayne Dupree EDP question, um. I have a real question, you know, the little silly, silly question, silly question. Uh, what are your thoughts on the rampant uh, proliferation of homosexuality within minority communities? Um, I hadn't really thought about it that much, honestly. Um, I, I don't know the statistics if it's like um, significantly more. It seems like I have heard that uh, from a guest on my show or whatever, but I'm not... Um, I couldn't quote the numbers to you, really, so I don't know if it's... It does seem like, though, like, I, I muted him already because, like, fuck that guy. But it does seem like blacks are getting gay out here. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I don't really know the numbers. They yeah. might be a little higher. Like, it seems like I've heard somebody say that, but I'd be lying to you if I said I knew that. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. I don't want to sit here and say that for sure. Uh, but it does see it does seem like that there's a higher percentage of gays in the black community. Um, I see some people in the chat saying that too, but I, like I said, I haven't seen. I don't know the I, numbers. As far as why that might be, um, I don't know honestly. If if that's the case, like I said, I don't know for sure that it is the case either. So, but yeah, I don't really know. I know that um, it's not as accepting uh, as it is in the white community, though. I do know that. Yeah, uh, there may be a higher percentage of of homos and trannies. Yeah, that might be true, but uh, that's kind of overall, all though. I think, like, definitely, yeah, just definitely not peace and love when you come out as a tranny in the black community. Um, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Just like, shake uh, it. Yeah, it's not peace and love. What's up, Beardson? I see him Beardson in the chat. Beardley in chat. Oh, so oh, we're gonna have him on tomorrow. Beardson, I got you pegged for 7 45 p.m. Eastern. Maybe I shouldn't use that on a debate with Flamenco involved pegging, but uh, I have you. <laughs> I have you have you set up at 7 45 p.m eastern <laughs> if that's okay uh, so it's just like the quick little jabs man it's the quick, quick little jabs i mean it's it's a lot there you know uh, what that little bastard made this shit personal <laughs> me. and i put it you know how many times i featured him how many big debates i had him on see you then Beerson. thank you brother all right we got him at 7 45 tomorrow confirmed but, you, know, you know how many he would be nobody without me. Like, that's not just me saying that. That's the absolute truth. You know how Flamingo got started? He was some Spurg in my chat who would always spam his Really? Stream. Yeah, he would spam his stream every night that he was starting after my stream. That's literally how he got known. The chat hated him so much that I started bringing him on the show because I thought it was funny how much they hated him. Do you mm. understand? So it's like James. It's like my James. Yes. James this is going to be... Ooh, by the way, look at the chat. There's some kill streamers in here who were around back then. Yes, it was on stream.me. I brought him in because I thought it was funny how much they hated him. We would bring him on just to bully him and laugh at him. <laughs> he talks about bullying me. Nigga, your whole career is built off me bullying you. <laughs> and it's not going to stop. It's going to continue tomorrow night. It's like, what are you talking about? Like, have some sense in your in your head. You're literally only known because I let you hold my balls up 
Damn. Yeah. Damn. Like, Damn. I let you hold my nuts. Wipe the sweat off of my nuts. That's what I let you do. Really, nigga? Damn, son. And you did it for free. <laughs> and Not you did it for dollar. free. Not one dollar did I ever pay that faggot. Not one simoleon. Not even one. Bruh. I mean, I don't know. All the, I don't know all the lore. I'm learning just now. That's what he knows it, too. Uh, <laughs> that is wild. He thinks that's a strike against me. <sighs> Damn. That's what All you right. call a pimp. That's what you call a pimp right there, Flamingo. Sorry. Sorry you wouldn't know. I made a little hoe get out there on the track and get daddy money. That's what I did. And uh, you know, you you like to take it you like to take it up the ass anyway. So I'm sure I'm sure you enjoy being mistreated like that. All right, well, we got two more callers here on Goodnight Groiper. We're going to bring on uh, Mason for America. Mason for America, you're live. Go ahead, my friend. Yo, what's up, Dalton? What's up, buddy? Good to see you. All right, all right. I'm on air. Yep. It's a little late. It's, it's past my bedtime, but Sorry. I had to stay on to talk to the Ralpha male. How's it going, Ethan? It's going good, man. What's up? What's up? I just have a few questions for you. Sure. What is your, I see your shirt. It's a, what's it say? Austin or yeah, no autism, but WWE. What's your favorite area of WWE? Um, the attitude era. Yeah. What's your, what's the favorite? Uh, who's your favorite guy? Uh, like of all time or of the attitude era? Um, of the attitude era, probably Austin, but you know, the rocks right there, um, all time. It probably, you know, there's a basket of people. So I'm from Memphis. Um, one of the territories used to be, uh, Memphis territory. Um, Jerry Lawler was kind of like a hero, uh, in my area when I was a kid and Memphis territory was still a thing when I was a kid. USWA had some great angles and stuff. So Jerry Lawler, I'd have to say Lawler, Hogan, Austin, the rock, Shawn Michaels would probably be my top five. Mm. You Shawn know, Michaels the go. I used in to, no particular order, by the way. That was just. A, I was a huge Undertaker fan, dude. Growing up. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, I, of course, Taker. You know, like if I expand it, you know, there's more people that I love, but like those top five. But yeah, the Undertaker. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, that guy's a legend. Yeah, one hundred percent. Mason, thank you for the call, man. I appreciate it. Hell yeah. All right, buddy. God bless you. Thank you. All right. We're going to bring on Virginian. Virginian, go ahead. You're live on Goodnight Groiper. What's, yo, what's up, Dalton? What's up, buddy? Good to see you. Not, not much. Uh, what's up, Ethan Ralph? You are epic, my friend. Thank um, you, man. I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. Yeah. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not be in here long because I'm sure Pokey Cell has something more interesting to say than me. But um, because you guys are talking about TV shows, and I know that Dalton likes Ozark, I want to like use this as a legend. Um, Dalton, uh, like, without like spoilers, do you like? Do you think like, how do you want Ozark to end? Like, I don't know. Like, just spitballing random conversation. I mean, I'm not all like, I'm not 100 percent caught up. Uh, so I don't really oh, know. Oh, my bad. Yeah, I don't really know how I want it to end exactly quite yet. Um, but I'm really enjoying it, dude. It's a great show. Have you seen it, Ralph? No, I haven't, but I heard it was good. Yeah, you might enjoy that. Money laundering, you know, dr drug cartel shit. It's a really cool show. Somebody else suggested that I watch it, and so when he started bringing it up, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember now. Yeah. Uh, it made me uh, recall that, yeah. That that show, that show uh, the uh, Mad Men, and I got to say The Handmaid's Tale, probably my all-time favorites. Breaking Bad, if I were to do like a top five, that'd definitely be on the list, so... Yeah, I don't know exactly how I want it to end yet, but I appreciate the call, man. Yeah, I got you. Well, dude, the most recent episode, like, the way it ends is fucking insane. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. Do you have a question for Ralph before you leave? Actually, yeah, I do. Um, So, uh, Mr. Ralph Amale, uh, I have... You don't have to get into it if you don't want to, because, again, I'm sure, like, you're done talking about drama, but what is the whole thing with Eliza Schaefer? Like, I don't understand that either, because I don't keep up with this, like, drama shit. Um, so Riketa, the guy we talked about earlier, Rackets went on his show and trashed me 
And so I went on Twitter and said, Hey, you know, I'm going to be in Dallas April 2nd, you know, for that weekend. Why don't you let me come on the show? I'll say my piece or, you know, go on the show. And he said, yeah, sure. Just pick your date. Well, ends up, I get closer to the day and it's like, eh, this is not feeling right. And it's just, eh, it seems like it might be some type of setup, whatever. Then, uh, chemo casino and Alice had their fake rape allegations they were putting out there. Um, and again, I say, I haven't even parsed every single word, uh, of all that, but basically that's a good way to summarize, uh, what they were trying to push. Uh, and so, mm. you know, that came out and all this stuff and it just seemed like it was kind of, um, it just didn't feel right. I hadn't heard anything from, from them at all either. Um, there was a bunch of just outright slander about me uh, daily, and so just didn't feel right. So I I messaged Elijah. I was like, I don't, you know, I'm gonna be busy that day with my own event, getting ready for that. So I backed out. But the next day, Quartering was talking with Rakeda on air, and accidentally revealed that Rakeda was supposed to be there as an ambush guest basically on that Friday episode that I had just canceled the day before now. According, oh, shit. Is, yeah. So according to idiot, he didn't, he wasn't supposed to reveal that. Um, so then it, once that got revealed, um, I kind of went on the war path because it was clear what they had planned. And then I ended up, uh, doing my own ambush. <laughs> that was so funny. Right? Yeah. I was a part of that. So, by the way, I'm going to talk about this on the kill stream tonight, which we're doing a kill stream tonight uh, after this show. And uh, you are here is now on hiatus. I don't know if you if you saw that, Dalton. No, and, I didn't. Uh, they, haven't, they haven't done an episode in almost two weeks, and uh, you know I got a, I I have a lot of things to say about that day. I probably won't say them tonight, uh, but not everything uh, hey, is. You, as you want to give us a sneak peek? Maybe you can lead uh, it in. I'm just going to say, Dalton, uh, that I was in contact with a lot of people uh, on my way to Mercury Studios there. Uh, a lot of people you oh, might boy. not expect. Uh, some people involved with certain things. You might not expect them to have been in contact with the Ralph Amell. I see somebody in chat who says, I heard Sydney quit. Well, I mean... You know, I, I I couldn't say I couldn't say, but um, I couldn't say, but uh, uh, maybe I don't know. Maybe tonight's the night that I tell the whole story on the kill stream. Um, I I would just say that um, many reports of strife there on the you are here set and between the you are here team. So we'll see, we'll see. I haven't decided uh, because it involves other people, and you know it's. And what can you reveal? What should you reveal? The eternal question. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Um, but um, I'll just say I, I haven't heard that, what you said in chat. But um, I I'll just point out that she walked off the show uh, when they started talking shit about me uh, and made a big point of doing so. So. Mm. I mean, I don't know. Take it, take it how you want to take it. So. Virginia, thank you for the call, man. I appreciate it. Good call. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, you guys are both epic. Um, I'm gonna go to sleep. And let Pokey sell. Uh, say something. Probably fall right. Uh, that you were the last caller, my man. You're the last caller tonight. But uh, but I appreciate it. All right. God bless uh, you. All right. God bless. All right, buddy. Uh, by the way, if he doesn't make it on. He's a legend. I saw him in uh, Florida, so he's cool. Poke sell. We'll bring him on. We'll bring him on. Last caller. He's the, yeah, so, yeah. he's the last guy. Poke sell. You're on. Good night, Groiper. Go ahead. Did he leave? Yeah. Nope. He's here. Poke sell. Hello. Hey. What's up? Hello. Hey. What's up, guys? So, what's Ralph, up? you're a fucking OG. Fucking Thanks, love you, dog Dalton. You as well. Thank but you, buddy. I do have a question. Um. Cats or dogs in term of pets, mm -hmm. what do you think is the superior pet, a cat or a dog? I'm a dog guy. I, I always have been. I, I hate cats. Why? Why do you hate cats? Why do you need a dog? I feel like do dogs are just more loyal. Like cats don't give a fuck about you. Like they don't care. So what, about do you, what do you need a dog for nowadays is my question. Well, like, I got a cocker. I, I get it. They're cool. 
cool. They're cool, but like you don't need to go out. I mean, unless you What do you like need hunting. a cat for? That's all right. You want to play the same game? What do you need a fucking cat for? <laughs> okay, so my cat loves me. No, he, he does. No. Shows up. First of all, it's a she. I don't care if your cat has balls. It's still a she. It's a cat. No, my cat is a he. By no, the way. Just it's a so dog. You know, it's, it's a. It's a. Fact. It's, it's no, a all fact cats are all cats are female. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know about that. But uh, what about you? <laughs> I was cats say that dogs. I um actually. So if I had to pick between dogs and cats, I mean, you know, my favorite animal of all time is my childhood dog growing up right uh and i'm i am a dog guy um but i will say over the last 10 years i've become a big cat guy too uh and i never had a cat until i was about 26 um and i'd always like cats you know other people's cats i just never had one because like dogs and my dad was like cats are disloyal they're pieces of shit like i don't want a cat um <laughs> and i ended up getting a cat and his name was king tut and he was a manx cat and he you had to a wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute you had a pet named king tut yeah his name was king tut. i did too yeah his name was king tut <laughs> uh that's, that's crazy man. Man. I, had, I had a husky <laughs> named king tut yeah, his name was King Tut, uh, and he didn't have a tail. And when I adopted him from the shelter, um, he I thought he had been abused. I was like, oh, man, this is fucked up. Somebody cut off this guy's tail. That's messed up. And <laughs> and his girl worked up. There, came over to me. She says, no, his tail didn't get cut off. He's a Manx cat, and uh, he was born without a tail. And that's his breed, doesn't have tails, basically. Huh. Uh, and he's Anglo. That's right. He was Anglo. And that's my <laughs> chat. Well, he is Anglo from the Island of Man. That's where Manx cats come from. Yeah. Uh, and so he uh, was just a great cat. I don't know. Just so smart and so, like, in tune with me. He did love me a lot. He passed away, unfortunately. Mm. Um, but uh, I have, I have um, his, uh, not sibling, but uh, cat that I picked up around the same time, um, well, a few years later. Cleo and she was a little bitty kitten. She was like this big. I'm not kidding. Uh, and it was about 20 degrees outside my house around Christmas. And so we ended up bringing her in. Uh, and so I've had her for a while and then smoke, uh, who I got from the shelter. My ex wife had me get this fucking cat. Speaking of her, it must just be the day to shit all over her. Why not? Uh, she had me get this cat who I love the cat by the way, but it's like, okay, we got divorced like fucking five months later. It's like, okay, great. Thanks. Mm. Uh, but he is a good cat, so yeah. It is kind of cringe that a lot of women like cats, but I will say I'm a firm cat respecter. I've had him my whole oh, well, life. Well, to each their uh, own, I guess. Cleo used to scratch that bitch all the time. Cleo knew. Cleo 100% knew. She used to scratch that hoe all the fucking time. <laughs> I mean, she wasn't a hoe, but she was a bitch. I'm, anyway. I'm a kitty respecter. So, anyway, guys, great stream tonight, Dalton. Thanks Thank you, buddy. Ralph, you're a fucking OG. Medicare's fucking dead. Fuck that guy. You're the fucking winner. So let's fucking go. Take it easy. Let's fucking go. Thank you so much, folks. I appreciate the call, man. You're a king. Um, well, that is just about going to do it tonight for us. Ralph, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you coming on, taking the time out of your of your evening. I know it's late, and you're still going to do the show after this. Incredible work ethic from this guy. You, the content king, by the way. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. So it's always an honor to, to have this guy, to talk to this guy. Um, blows my mind sometimes, so... I'm excited for your show tomorrow. I think we all are. Everybody be sure to go and uh, follow cozy.tv slash Ethan Ralph. But let the people know where they can find you, where they can, uh, where they can, you know, uh, help you out, uh, show their support and love for the Ralph of Mail. Well, thank you so much, 100% Dalton, Claude Felter. I mentioned this on my show all the time. Of course, we met up in person, et cetera. Yeah. Um, but one of the best young talents that I've seen in a while. I always try to promote his show and send people over to his channel. Um, get along with him great. 
Uh, and I just think he's he's got an eye for what's good, uh, and he's good on the air, uh, and just a fun guy, and he's not on some bullshit. Uh, which goes <laughs> along. If it was only if it was just that last thing, if it was just that last thing, he's not on some bullshit. It would have still been a big fucking uh, accommodation there. But uh, tomorrow, of course, you can find me on Twitter, the Ralph Retort, Killstream.live, T.me slash the Ralph Retort on Telegram. But tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern. We're going to start up the festival. I haven't thought of the name yet, but I'll have it by tomorrow. Uh, we're going to do a kill stream tonight, too, in a few minutes. But uh, the big show, excuse me, I got the hiccups like my daughter. <clears throat> my little baby's getting the hiccups all the time. <laughs> Another story. But anyway, uh, 11 a.m. Oh, God, are you serious? <laughs> Come on, Rob, get it out. Get it out. 11 a.m. Eastern through 9 p.m., and then we're going to go through the debate, too. Uh, but we're going to have a ton of guests tomorrow. I have the whole list here. Now, here's part of the order, I guess. 2.30 p.m., Mark Collett, Alt-Hype at 3, Dalton Clodfelter, 3.15, Stardust at 4, The Dymo at 5.15, Kai Schwimmer at 5.30, Butters at 6.15, Alex Stein at 7, Brittany from Politically Provoked at 7.30, Beardson at 7.45, Baked Alaska at 8.00. And that's those are the times I have set. Uh, but there's other people coming on the show, including Aim Aim Alex, who's the one Worski uh, told to pull out a gun and kill somebody with on air. Uh, he's going to be on the air tomorrow, and he's not going to kill anybody. I hope uh, Vito is going to be there at some point. Hake from the Hake Report. I'm trying to read people who aren't uh, among the ones I already mentioned. Wooza, Bibble, Surfer, Big Tech. Uh, Michael Cisco and I think Adam Green as well. So quite the list there. I want you guys to tune in. 11 a.m. It starts. We'll be going all day uh, and through the debate. I don't know what kind of panel we'll have for the debate. I'm hoping Brittany Beardson and Baked, uh, at least one or two of those, maybe we'll stick around for the debate. But um, we shall see, Dalton. I just want to thank you, man, for having me on the show and give me a few minutes there to promo my shit. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow and uh, i'll be on here in a few minutes tonight. not that you fucking need it you got that you're gonna uh, fucking kill it tomorrow dude you know you always do and 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 it's great like i said you've been popping off this past this past week those numbers have been fucking fantastic you've been killing it and uh that's always awesome to see because your content's great i'm glad that people are have been enjoying it and uh getting involved and whatnot it's good stuff Thank you, man. We definitely has, have had some rocket fuel uh, this week, and uh, I'd love to see it continue. There goes uh, another super chat for you right here at the end. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They want to yeah. hit, they gotta hit that goal now late, dude. They got to hit that goal before it ends. <laughs> uh, they, well, once again, thank you, buddy. I appreciate you. God bless you, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Talk again tomorrow. And thank you, and thank you to your audience. I'll see you guys soon. All right. Later, buddy.